and he cursed. And I pray, may the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your eyes, O Lord, my rock and my diva. Amen. Today marks the beginning of the new season of Advent. The word Advent came from Latin as veneer, which means to come to or simply coming. When I think of the season of Advent or Christmas, it brings me back to the memory of vacations I had during my military service. You know, you know, in Korea, it is mandatory for all men to do two years of military service. So after finishing 40 days of training at the boot camp and being deployed at the military camp where I was going to spend the rest of my military service, I had my first vacation, so-called 100th day vacation. And I was so happy and eager to see my parents, especially my mom, who prayed for me it's like every morning. And guess what? The dinner table was full. Bulgogi, japchae, kimchi, and tofu soup, and you know, all the delicious Korean food you can possibly imagine, possibly think of, they were there. And my mother, she cried and cried five days later on the day I returned to the base. It was a very emotional day. The, the second vacation in which I worked with my father out in the field, you know, breaking the dirt cloth, it was okay. I mean, the food was okay. But for the following vacation and the next, next one, it was not. It was not. Because, you know, there was nothing new. There was nothing new. I mean, here it comes, you know, here it comes again. <laughs> you know, if you think about it, something super exciting at first becomes later rather boring or too mundane. Right? And my younger brother served in Air Force and came out way more frequently than I. Later, my mom, she basically complained. She basically complained to me. He came to open. And Mike's like, again? Give me a break. And it's like, sometimes he doesn't even know she's, you know, he's coming. <laughs> and then it's like, door open. And it's like, mommy, I'm here. It's like, she's like, what? <laughs> Unexpected or it's like, later, unwelcome guest. <laughs> Likewise, likewise, here comes again the Advent and Christmas. And we are supposed to be excited. But you know, we've been doing this for all, our whole life, right? We've been doing this for our whole life. Furthermore, the lectionary text today is just her to be excited with. It basically says there will be distress and confusion on the earth and the powers of the heavens, meaning the sun, moon, and stars will be shaken. And I thought, like, what, a, what a great passage. Last Thursday, pastors in the Tri-Valley Circuit had a meeting and a, we had a Bible study here at Grace. And their first response to this passage was like, what is this? Because it doesn't seem to fit today, the first Sunday of Advent. By the way, I thank Creations uh, for graciously providing lunch for us. And Grace, Grace in our church is the smallest church in our circuit, but our heart is not. <laughs> our heart is big. And you came my hands up. <laughs> hey, thank you. So today's text is a part of Apocalypse found in Luke's Gospel where Jesus talks about the destruction of the te Jerusalem temple and the persecution of his followers. So what are the lessons here? What are the lessons from this typical text? 
The first lesson is that simply put, life in end times. You know, we are living in the end in, in end times, right? The life in end times is difficult, messy, and distressing. It's anxiety producing. Life is anxiety producing. Am I right? <coughs> right? The second lesson is so what? So what? What do you do? Be awake because he, the help, is coming. This time, let us pause a little bit and think about it for a second. Think about it for a second. Everybody has a mess they try to fix or clean up. The battle they are fighting against and the distress they desperately desire to get up. Everybody has those problems. Sometimes the problem is caused or dictated by the external factors like those who lost their house, business, and even their family members by the campfire. Sometimes the lack of financial resources or disease, you know, disease puts us in trouble. And we feel like those things cut us and we are trapped. But the thing is, they remain as problems because there is not much we can do. Right? If, we, if we can fix it right away, it, you know, we won't be called a problem. Right? We call it a problem because we cannot fix it. It's just, just there. What then can we do? People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of heavens will be shaken. Well, let me put it this way, that for my plans will not work. That's why we are troubling. Then what's next? What can we do? Listen to the scripture today. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a crowd with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to take place, what do you do? Stand up and lay your heads because your redemption is drawing near. So when worries of this world hit us hard or there is panic or anxiety attack, let us come down, come down, look up and pray because your redemption is drawing near. My friends, let's think about it. The real battleground. The real battleground, more open than that, is not out there, but in here, in our mind and in our thoughts. That's what drives us crazy. What's happening inside us? But let us take the lesson today. When those times come, calm down, look up, and pray, because your redemption is growing near. You may remember J.R. Tolkien's classical novel, you know, classic novel, The Lord of the Rings, or the movie series that came out later. And if you remember the plot, or the story, especially the last battle between the army of orcs and the, and the united army led by the fellowship, the hard-fought battle takes place out there in order to distract the eyes of Sauron, the evil villain, who searches for the ring. Do you remember that scene? The last battle between the army of orcs and the united army led by the fellowship. But if you think about it, I hope, I, think about it, please. If you think about it, the more important battle is, is fought, not out there, but inside Mordor. Right? The, the capital of Middle Earth, where Sauron lives. The battle is fought between Golu and, and Frodo and Sam, right? That's, that's the real ba battle. But the real, real battle is fought within, if you remember the last scene. When he, you know, when the ring is, you know, is dropping. And the real, the real, real battle is fought where? It's in the mind of Frodo between his desire to take the ring 
and his desire to radical, right? That's the real battle, right? In this sense, think about it, Golu is not a weird creature out there, but a reflection of himself, Frodo, who is a mirror image of who? Us. That's the real battle, right? The Golem is not a weird creature out there trying to, you know, steal the ring, but it's us. The real battle is fought within. The battle we are fighting cannot be won by our own strength. We need someone else intervening on behalf of us. We need the Savior who will save us. And he is coming. Now, my friends, Christmas is near, and everybody will be busy, you know, busy decorating their house and trees and doing gift shopping. Companies, organizations, and the churches will be busy setting up the budget, <laughs> right? <laughs> For the next year, like our church, you know, will be <clears throat> last meeting, last minute mini meetings, farewell parties, contracts and papers to be submitted and most of all bills to be paid right <laughs> it will be a chaos <clears throat> and we will be in distress but as the scripture teach, teaches us today when those times come come down look up and pray because our redemption is going near. So my friends in Jesus Christ, let us remember that Jesus is coming. Our King will return. Not only on the Christmas day or during the Advent season, but also to every heart desperate for his vegetation and for his return. So my friends, come down. Look up and pray. Because your redemption is growing here. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. God, we welcome Christ, our Lord, our King, in this season of Advent as we are waiting for His return. Come and visit us who are, who are desperate for His voice, for, for your touch, and for your embrace. O come, O come, Emmanuel, the Prince of Peace. When storms of life are raising and our hearts are in distress, come as a sweet and warm breeze. Soften our hardened hearts and still our disturbed minds. We lift up our heads and we lift up our hands because we know that you are near. Come, Jesus, come and govern our mind, hearts, and soul. Be our King. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.